All right, this is a video lesson for Unit 12, Lesson 3, which is solving by factoring. Most of this lesson is review on factoring. There is one big new property that we're going to learn right away that is the only new thing in this lesson, and that's called the zero product property. And what it does is it shows us once we are factored, how we can use factoring to finish and solve a problem. Um, so what this property says, it's actually a pretty simple property. It says that if you're multiplying two things together, A and B, and the answer is zero, then one or both of the two things have to be zero. There's no way you could take any two numbers and multiply them together and get zero if neither of them are zero. Um, so that that is the zero product property. That alone is the zero product property. It says if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero or B equals zero or both. In most of our cases of what we're doing right now, both we're going to look at when they could be zero. So really what's going to happen in these notes is you're going to see a few examples here early on. Um, and then after that, you're just going to be practicing and watching the video to check to see how you did on these problems. Okay, so once you start feeling comfortable, you might want to just get going and do these problems without watching the video and then just... Um, Fast forward the video to see if you're getting these answers right. If you're getting them right, great. If you're not, rewind and watch what I did. So when I have two things here that are getting multiplied together, one of the two things is x plus 1. The other thing is x minus 2. Zero product property says that if these two things are getting multiplied together and making an answer of 0, then one or both of the things must be 0. So I'm going to set x plus 1 equal to 0, and we're going to see when that would happen. Well, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative 1. So if I were to plug in negative 1, it would make this part 0, which then it doesn't really matter what's over here because anything times 0 equals 0. So negative 1 is going to be a solution. It's going to work. Similarly, I could set x minus 2 equal to 0 and see when that would happen. Well, that would happen if I add 2, add 2. That would happen if x ever equals 2. So if I took 2 and I plugged it back in over here, I would get 2 minus 2, which is 0, which would make this 0. And it doesn't matter what's going on over here. If the other part is 0, then the whole thing is going to equal 0. So both negative 1 and positive 2 are solutions. They both give us true statements if you plug them back in, so they're both solutions. Now, this problem's a little different. So first of all, you've got a monomial over here, and then you have a binomial over here. Okay, so we're gonna set each of those things equal to zero. So 4x squared equals zero, and 3x minus 5 equals 0. Well, the 4x squared equals 0, I could divide. So I'm going to basically solve this using square roots from yesterday. If I divide both sides by 4, I get x squared equals 0. And the only number that's going to work here, I mean, you could square root both sides if you really want to. And you're going to get x equals plus or minus 0. But there's no such thing as a positive or negative 0. There's just 0. So that answer ends up being 0. You might have been able to tell that right from the beginning. If you ever have a monomial, the only way a monomial is ever going to equal 0 is if the variable is 0. So if x equals 0, that's the only way 4x squared is going to equal 0. So you could go through the process of solving it with square roots, or you could just use that idea. Whenever there's a monomial, then 0 is one of the answers. Then I come over here, 3x minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. I'm going to get 3x equals 5. And all I'm doing is solving a linear equation right now. That's the beauty of the zero product property. It turns a big polynomial into little linears, which we already know how to solve. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And we'll just take the fraction answer here, which would be 5 thirds, or 1.67. So again, we have two answers. We have two answers here, two answers here. A lot of these problems are going to have more than one answer. On to a couple practice problems that are just like those. Again, I would be trying these on your own, 
and then coming back and watching the video to see how you did. So I have two things here and here. I gotta look at when each one could equal zero. So when would 2x minus one equal zero? If I added one to both sides, I would get 2x equals one. And if I divide both sides by two, I get x equals one half. So one half is one of my answers. And then x plus five could equal zero. And I just subtract five, subtract five, and I get x equals negative five. So those are my two answers, x equals one half and x equals negative five. If I plug in the one half, I would get two times one half, which would be one, minus one equals zero. And if one of the parts of the problem equals zero, then the whole thing equals zero, so that's gonna be good. And then if I plugged in negative five in here, that would make negative five plus five equal to zero. And if one of the two things getting multiplied together is zero, then the whole thing will equal zero, which would work. So both of these answers are good. One more problem over here. I could set this part equal to zero, so x minus five equals zero. Adding five to both sides, I get an answer of x equals five. And then over here, x plus one equals zero. Subtract one, subtract one, x equals negative one. Those are my two answers for that problem. So that was the new skill. Now, to actually do the goal of the lesson, which is to solve by factoring, here's all we need to do. We need to move all of the terms to one side, then factor, and then we'll be back to the problems that we were just doing at the top of this lesson. Okay, so this is a combination of that whole factoring unit and what we just learned with ZPP. So the key is, it's called the ZPP, the zero product property. So this has to be zero. If there's anything over here, you have to move it over to this side so that this side equals zero. And it does now, so we're good. So once everything is equal to zero, we're gonna factor. This is a leading coefficient one problem. So I'm gonna look at a T chart. What multiplies to negative 24 and what adds to five And those numbers are going to be 8 and negative 3. So this is going to be x plus 8 times x minus 3 equals 0. And then ZPP. So I got everything to one side, made sure this side equaled 0. Then I factored to get to here. And now I'm going to set each part equal to 0. Subtracting 8 from both sides, I get x equals negative 8. And then I set x minus 3 equal to 0. Adding 3 to both sides, I get x equals 3. So those are my two answers. On to 4. We're already equal to 0, so I don't have to do any moving around. Leading coefficient is 1, so I can do a t-chart. What multiplies to negative 18 and adds to negative 3? I get negative 6 and positive 3. So I have a minus 6, a plus 3 equals 0. That is just this factored. And now I'm going to set each one equal to 0. a minus 6 equals 0, which if I solve by adding 6 to both sides, I get a equals 6 as a solution. Or a plus 3 equals 0, which if I subtract 3 from both sides, I get a equals negative 3 as a solution. On to a couple of practice problems. This is just like the two we just did, so if you're ready to try these on your own, pause the video, do them, and then fast forward to see if you got them right. So I factor this, what add, or sorry, multiplies to 20 and adds to negative 21. Well, that's a little tough for me right now. I'm having a tough time figuring it out. So I'm gonna go check one and 20. Oh, yeah, I bet that's it. One and 20, I'll make them both negative, and then that'll do it. So there it is. So x minus one, 
x minus 20 equals 0, set this equal to 0, set this equal to 0, and solve each one. Add 1, add 1, x equals 1, add 20, add 20, x equals 20. Those are my two solutions. This one, I'm going to factor because it's leading coefficient 1. So I'm going to go and say what multiplies to 169, what adds to 26. Might take you a minute in a calculator to figure this out, but it's 13 and 13. So w plus 13 times w plus 13 equals 0. Well, these are really the same thing, so I don't have to solve it twice. I'll just solve it once because they're, they're the same thing. So w plus 13 equals 0, subtract 13, and we get an answer of w equals negative 13. And if the two answers are the same, you just write it once. So both of these have the same answer, w equals negative 13, and I'm just going to write that once as an answer of w equals negative 13. There are some problems where we'll still only get one answer. A few more last examples just so you can make sure you know what's going on and then you can get going to the homework. Um, this problem here is not equal to zero. It's not the negative 57 product property, it's the zero product property. So all I gotta do is I gotta move that off of that side. I gotta get it out of here. So I'm gonna get x squared plus 22x plus 57 equals zero. And then I am going to factor it. So I'm gonna look and say what multiplies to 57 and adds to 22. The answer is 19 and three. So it's going to be x plus 19, x plus 3 equals 0, and then I'm going to solve each one. x plus 19 equals 0, subtract 19, x equals negative 19, x plus 3 equals 0, subtract 3, x equals negative 3. Those are our two answers. On to 6. Oh, this one's a little tough. That 221, that's kind of hard for me even. Okay, so we're just going to have to figure it out. What multiplies to 221 and adds to 30? So it's a positive. So I know both of the factors have to be positive since it adds to a positive. So I know it's not 1 and 221. I'm going to start going to my calculator. I know it's not even, so it's not 2. So let's see, 221 divided by 3, that's, uh, nope, that doesn't work. 221 divided by 4 doesn't work. 221 divided by 5 is not going to work. Let's try 6. No, 221 divided by 7. No, 221 divided by, I don't think it's going to be 8. Um, let's try 221 divided by 9. No, let's try 221 divided by 11. 221 divided by... 13? I uh, get 13 and 17. And I think that'll do it. So I just had to keep going until I found something that went into 221 and I ended up figuring it out. So 221, 13 times 17 is going to make that 30. So we can do this and say x plus 13, x plus 17 equals 0. And then, as you could tell, when we don't have a number in front of this x, these answers go pretty quick and easy. It's just going to be x equals negative 13 and x equals negative 17. I just skipped the work on that one and went straight to the answer. Last couple of problems for you. Okay, and I'm going to do kind of the same thing. This is already set up in ZPP. It's already factored. So if it's factored, you just have to solve for each one. This one's going to give us x equals 4. I'm really setting up x minus 4 equals 0, adding 4 to both sides to solve it. But I'm, I'm thinking you might be picking up on the pattern here, so I'm just jumping right to it. x equals negative 3 and x equals 5. This one happened to have three answers. 
final problem. Let's get this one in, in um, set to zero. It's called standard form. So I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides and get x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0 because I need the 0 for ZPP, zero product property. Okay, I need to factor this guy now that I have it in this form. So I'm going to factor it by looking at what multiplies to 9 and adds to negative 6. And that's going to be negative 3 and negative 3. So I get x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. And really that's x minus 3 squared. And if you ever have one of your terms squared, it's going to produce the same solution every time. Just like how on that earlier problem I went and said, okay, well then we're just really solving this question. Okay, same thing if we have it written in a squared form. Um, it's just called a repeated answer. So we're going to set x minus 3 equal to 0. Add 3, add 3, and we get an answer here of x equals 3 as our final solution. So it's a lot of the same. We're doing a lot of the same skills in every problem here. Okay, the big idea is this new thing called ZPP, zero product property, where we, if we have a factored form set equal to zero, we can set each of the individual factors into zero and solve. And we just did that over and over again, and hopefully you caught the pattern and you're understanding it.